this one's kind of weird because I came out here originally to do one thing and it's kind of an interesting idea. If you recall, or if you saw the video, I added these things here to my miter saw station and they support a wide panel that I could cut on there. And shortly after I did this, I got another idea. And what that involves is still using those things, but instead of using the miter saw, I would make a kind of a flip down saw board that would work with the cordless uh, circular saw to make a cross cut quickly and easily. All I'd have to do is slide these things out, set my sheet up here, have a maximum cut width of something around 24 inches. So, you know, it makes it worthwhile. However, <laughs> while I'm here, Looking at this, uh, first thing I noticed, my shop time casting here would have to go, or I'd have to move it to the other side. Not a big deal, but I don't have the height in there to get, I don't even think I could get the 24 inches, because you have to make the thing articulate. It has to be kind of double hinged so that as it comes down, it can accommodate any thickness of material you know, within limits, say from quarter inch up to an inch and a half uh, type thing. Although I don't think I'd be ripping anything uh, or cross cutting anything that's an inch and a half that's 24 inches wide. I don't have anything. I never use anything like that. So, but while I was thinking about that and possible solutions to the length, maybe make it double folding, it could fold out again, and you know, I get extra that way, which was a neat idea and it would work as long as I could get the hinge mechanism, you know, set up properly. I had another idea <laughs> and this one is even better. I was looking at my table saw here and this is actually a much more convenient place to make those kinds of cuts. Say if you have a sheet that's, uh, you know, 28 inches wide, um, probably the easiest as long as you have everything set up for it is to set up some sort of a track saw or a saw board and make your cross cut that way. So that got me thinking what if I made something similar to what I was thinking here on the end of this table saw right here something that would normally be down below the top of the saw so it wouldn't get in the way and when you needed it, it could um, parallelogram up into place and set down on top of any size thickness of material and make a very accurate cross cut. And what you could use is the fence on a table saw in conjunction with that. So I thought that was really neat. And that's what I'm going to start to do right now. And this is something that back in the old days, I would just build as I go but that is less efficient than it needs to be. So I'm gonna take, I don't know, the next hour and go in my office and try to design something out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but what I wanna, I wanna save time out here building. Uh, and I can do that by using SketchUp to pre-design the thing. So the first thing I need to do is measure how much space I got here. And this is 36 and three quarters inches long this way. And it can actually go further. I could make this a full, no, I couldn't. I could, if it's stuck past the end of the thing. But I don't need that. I need the, the ability at the most to cut maybe 30 inches wide. Anything bigger than that, it's just not, uh, like to put a set of full sheet up here on the table saw is something that I very rarely do unless I can't get it outdoors and cut it on the sawhorses, which is a lot more practical than this. But I think, see, I wanted to use, I want to use it with the table saw fence and that only goes over like to the end of this side table over there. So that kind of limits it there. But I could get 40 inches, but then, I don't know, I'll see. 
what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll go inside. I'm going to measure the saw because this is the one that I want to use for it because I don't like using this one as I explained in another video that the blade is on the wrong side. So this would be perfect for this. And then I can kind of make a holder down underneath for the uh, saw to sit inside at like a uh, kind of a, a cubby so that dust doesn't come on to it from the saw. Come on to it from the saw and I could also put the charger down there as well to charge the batteries. So very convenient and use up a little bit of the space at the end of the saw which doesn't get used. So and I can also make it if I were to do it like that I could make it freestanding actually so it doesn't attach to the saw at all or it would attach to the saw for accuracy but just screwed in in a couple places say on the end of the outfeed table here. All right, I have the track itself made. What I did was I went in and I tried to do a little bit of designing uh, for this and um, kind of worked on it, kind of didn't. I really didn't see the point of laying everything out that I could already see in my mind. And what I did was I rounded up eight hinges to make it, make it hinge uh, so that it could come up and stay in line and go back down and stay in line. And then after I got this together, I thought that what's the point of making, like not, not what's the point, but there's a better way to do this other than hinging it, or at least a more efficient way of doing it. And that would be just for it to slide up and down on you know straight up and down guides it doesn't have to um, hold itself up or anything basically you're going to lift this thing up slide your sheet underneath and set it down on top of it make your cut and then take your piece away and let it go back down again so it doesn't need any um, complicated mechanism it just needs something to keep it going straight up and down and that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to start working on that. And it's a good thing. You know, you stop and you think about these things and you come up with different ideas on how to do it. Right now, I'm just trying to consider what's the best way to attach it to this track. So you can see the saw. Well, the saw is supposed to slide in. A little stiff now. That's all right. It'll loosen up to over time. I'm going to get some wax and put in here anyway. But... You get the idea. This slides back and forth. Uh, saw is not normally in there. Put it away. I also changed my mind on making it freestanding. I'm going to attach it right to this outfeed table part here. Maybe have a couple of props that actually go right down to the floor to add extra support. And that's it. I'm not going to build any uh, cubbing underneath to put the saw in or the charger or anything like that. Because I know it'll just get in the way in the current uh, configuration for the saw and you know eventually I'm going to build a new saw and then this one will go away and then this new this thing here will either be transferred to the new saw or I'll build a new one that's better you know depending on how this works out that's one thing about building stuff you learn from building them what works and what doesn't, you know, you get a better appreciation then. Anyway, I'm going to go because I'm rambling again and get to building that support system for this. All right, we're moving right along. I made the supports for the thing and got those installed on the saw. And that was easy enough. They're just screwed on, just a piece of plywood. So what I need to do is break that off after I worked so hard to screw it on. Uh, I actually glue these in place and then set them down to dry. And went in and did some other stuff while that was happening. And I came out and tried to screw it together and it broke off. So I had to nail them in place and try to fake it for the final video <laughs> type thing. Anyway. It's all part of life's rich pageant. Anyway, those things um, guide it up and down. You know, it'll come straight like this type thing. And what I need to do is I've already marked on here 
a couple of lines for the guide strips that'll go beside these, you know, and act as runners so that it will come up straight. And I'm going to cut those from this piece of maple here and then just screw those on there. Um, I like this, uh, but I, uh, even while I'm doing it, I'm thinking that there may be problems with it. There may be things, there are probably things that I would do better if I were to do a permanent version of this. So I'm looking at this as kind of temporary. <laughs> as long as the saw lasts, this will be temporary. But the immediate thing I would change is these guide parts here, I would try to make them wider. I just grabbed a piece of plywood that I had and used that, but I'd make them a little bit wider and I'd also make them thicker so that they more rigidly attach to this because I can almost tell that I'm going to have a bit of a racking problem lifting this up unless I get it right there in the center. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay, I've got it done, and I just, you know, loaded down this piece of half-inch plywood to make the inaugural cut, and got a bit of a snag. The thing is, my table saw is not big enough to support it when I push it back like that, so I've got to hold it down with one hand, and then I can't lift this up really smoothly, Kind of makes it look clunky when I do it like that and then slide it over in a place like this and um, I can see a mistake that I made already I made look at the mistake I made I guess <laughs> This is the kind of stupid stuff that you do when you're doing this kind of stuff. When you're... I put that support further back thinking that it would be okay there. Uh, but it's not. And that really limits how wide the piece can be to the space in between those uprights, which is 34. That's not bad. That's... You know what? I'm going to say that's good. I could cut this off and say whatever. Anyway, so my point was <laughs> that I almost need a weight or something to hold that down while I lift this up. And that wouldn't have been a problem with the hinge arrangement that I was going to do. Because all you'd need to do is just take two fingers and lift up on that hinge thing and it would just come right up without, you know, any racking or binding. And that's the issue that I kind of figured I would have with this. So I'm kind of, I'm calling this like a half success, <laughs> I guess you could say. If I were to do it again, which I will, when I build my new saw, I'll, I'll build one of these again, I will make it um, hinged up. That makes... That makes it more complex, but it also uh, solves the problem of it racking. And it also will keep it better in line. And I still, even though I made those uh, guide bars pretty tight, I've still got a little bit of play here. Now, I'm not going to be using this for super accurate cuts. This is just for sizing a panel down. You know, you get a long piece and you want to cut it down to an exact size on the table saw. So you cut, you know, 30 inches off the end and then cut it down to 28 inches on the table saw to make it accurate. And that's what this would be for. But it would be nice if it, if it could make perfectly accurate cuts that you could count on. that was a nice cut and when I measure it it is perfect it's nine and three quarters so a nice square cut so yeah we're calling this one 
a success, but I know I can make a better version and that'll be coming at some point in the future. But in the meantime, I think that this one's perfectly viable if you work within its limits. Like I showed, you know, if you got the belly clamp, put it, you know, use that and uh, you can get it done. Okay, I've run out of things to say. <laughs> now, my brother, I shall be king. Gods, knights, squires, prepare for battle. <laughs> 